with the claim. Uh, I don't know what you can infer from the fact that uh, there's a correlation between some index of uh, white identity uh, thing and uh, Trump voting. I'm not sure that you can infer anything as robust as what you want to see on the basis of that. We could come back to that. Um, Black Lives Matter is not some generic expression of black aspiration in America to which a racist, if he opposes it, uh, would, uh, would object. It's a radical movement. Have you read their manifesto? Do you know what they well, stand no for and what they call for? Let me just say this. These people are not in the mainstream of American politics. If you go and look at their list of demands, it's a laundry list of the far left's uh, ideological uh, positions on a lot of issues that don't have anything to do with police. By the way, I don't think there's any particular they there. I think okay, one of the fine. So then we can, we can quibble about like, whether or not the subject behind the point that I'm making, which is how the rhetoric and the identity of Black Lives Matter affects voters who happen not to be Democrats sometimes. We can quibble mm -hmm. about whether or not there's a real thing called Black Lives Matter. I don't care. The point I'm trying to make is that the, the, the narrative is radical and opposition to it is not an expression of racism. Let me just be more clear about that. They don't speak for me, Harold, and they don't speak for black people. They don't represent the aspirations of black people. They are a particular historic phenomenon. It's rooted in the African-American experience, but it is not characteristic of it. They don't like the churches, for example. Not a single one of them. They don't speak I, for me and they don't speak for my people. And therefore, opposition to their vitriol, to their raining down projectiles on police officers, to their uh, uh, equivocation on basic expressions of, uh, of a fealty to the country and our collective enterprise here, when people react against that, no, they don't have a get out of jail free card because they're black. But I, I they see, have to live with the, the, they have to live with the political consequences of what they do. I do not accept that the fact that Western Pennsylvanians, Southern Ohioans, uh, out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin's, and a majority of the voters in the state of Michigan affirm Trump tells me that there's some intrinsic white supremacist uh, strain of uh, contempt and hatred in this country. It does not. OK. And unless Democrats reckon with the fact that not everybody has to like affirmative action, that not everybody has to line up and genuflect as I just did on the gender issue. When a black person stands up in Congress and goes through some kind of act, they can react to it the way mature voters react, which is I have contempt for Colin Kaepernick taking a knee while my national anthem is playing. They can have contempt for that without being racist. I'm saying I, I'm just annoyed. I'm tired. I've headed up to here. Identity politics is just crap, John. You know what? Glenn? We're a country of 320 million people. Everything's got to be about race. When when the Democrats were having their debate, there was a candidate in the uh, race called James Webb. Used to be the senator from West Virginia, a Democrat, a good the man. The military. Yeah, I liked him. I liked him. Um, he voted for the Affordable Care Act. OK. Um, he, when he came into the Senate in 2007, made mass incarceration one of his issues and had hearings. I actually went and testified up on the Hill at Jim Webb's invitation. We have to do something about mass incarceration. Good man. Happens to be a white man who um, appreciates that the Scots-Irish hillbilly ethnic group uh, in, uh, you know. I've read the book, uh, by the way. Uh, 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 J.D. Vance's book, good, good, good. It's, it's worth, your, worth your attention. This is Jim Webb. Um, he happens to think that white people count too, okay? Um, and when the, uh, the Democratic candidates were asked at their debate, black lives matter or all lives matter, uh, the guy from Maryland, uh, I forget his name now, uh, said black Martin lives. O'Malley. Martin O'Malley said black lives matter. Uh, Bernie Sanders said black lives matter. Hillary Clinton said Black Lives Matter. Jim Webb said All Lives Matter. He was the only one up there who said All Lives Matter. John, that was the right answer. Glenn, wasn't it Martin O'Malley who said that? I'm just doing a fact check no. here. Okay, well, you can look it up. I don't believe he, so. I think he got in trouble for saying it. But anyway, the point is somebody said that. Not, not in the debate. I think he had said it on some other occasion. And by the time well, the debate came okay. around, he had revised his... He had revised. Okay. Look, look, look. You give people, white people and black people for that matter, especially the ones who have to live in tough neighborhoods, a choice. 
between the cops and the Black Lives Matter uh, types. You give them a choice. You give them a choice between law and order or what some people think is social justice, which is being on Michael Brown's side in the dispute between Michael Brown and Darren Wilson. You give them a choice, and then you're going to be surprised that a majority of them or enough of them in enough places like Pennsylvania and Ohio and Michigan and Wisconsin and North Carolina and Florida side with the cops. And then, and then, not you personally, you're going to call them racist? Okay? Black Lives Matter or All Lives Matter? There was only one correct answer to that question for anybody who wants to lead a country of 300 million people. Okay? And it was that all lives matter. They were under the sway of a misguided, self-absorbed, morally superficial movement. Nobody had the courage to say that. That's one of the reasons that they lost this election. It would have been so easy to say it. Okay? It would have been not all that hard. All you had to do was do what Bill Clinton would have done. And in fact, what Bill Clinton did do when he was confronted by some of these nuts who think that they have a right to shout down anybody because we're not dotting every I and crossing every T the way they want to on their manifesto of demands. When Bill Clinton had the courage to confront them, he was pilloried by all of the usual suspects in the media and on the left of the Democratic Party, but he was absolutely right. He had the right instinct about that, you know.